Hey guys, this is EC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are the field piece job link probes. So this whole kit right here is the wireless charge and air test kit, and we're going to be using that to check a refrigerant level in an outdoor condensing unit that has MO99 as a retrofit refrigerant for R22. So before using these, you got to make sure that you download the job link app, either on your cell phone or an iPad or something. And from there, basically what you're going to be doing is, so these are already set. So you have that set as liquid right here, and this set as liquid, and you have these ones right here for the suction line. So suction right here, and suction right here. Right when you get these out of the bag, you wanna go ahead and turn them all on, and we're gonna check the temperatures and pressures first. Before you even hook them up to the system, you gotta make sure that they're all calibrated right and everything's working correctly. So you just hold the buttons in on each of the tools right here, until the green light flashes and then it's on. Once they're all on, we're gonna go ahead and go into our job link app. Now you're gonna go click on the measurements and at the top right there's three circles. You're gonna click on that and you're gonna go to tool manager and this is going to show you all of your tools that you have. So say we wanted to disconnect our psychrometers, we can go ahead and unclick them. But if you want to use all of them, then you're going to make sure that they all have the red heart on them. So once they're all clicked and good, you're going to hit OK. And now we read a liquid line pressure of zero, suction line pressure of zero, so those are good. You read a return air temperature, 86.1, supply air dry bulb temperature, 85.7, and we read on our suction line temp sensors 85 and liquid line temp sensor 86 degrees. So if you have say under a degree or maybe 1.5 degrees, you're gonna be good with those. So I just wanted to check to make sure everything was accurate before we go ahead and get started. Now what's nice about these is, you know, doing preventative maintenances when you assume that the refrigerant charge is gonna be good, you can just go ahead and hook these up and then it's real easy to just go ahead and disconnect. You don't have to attach the, the manifold gauge set, the hoses, and then do the full disconnect procedure, and it's just a lot uh, nicer. I use this little T for uh, when I hook into the vapor line, so we're going to take this right here and we're gonna hook right in. The reason for that is if we have to add a little bit of refrigerant in, uh, I can go ahead and hook in right in this trader valve right here. Right here, we gotta make sure that we have the correct ones hooked up. So this is suction. So we're gonna hook this up right here. And you heard it beeping, it's making good contact. Here we go. Now we're gonna take our digital psychrometers inside just to take a delta T reading. And we got one return and one supply. So this is the return, that's the supply. I'm gonna be putting them within three foot of the where the return gets sucked in at and where the supply air gets pushed out at in the duct. Since there's a thermostatic expansion valve at the inlet of the evaporator coil, we're going to check the system's refrigerant charge in subcooling. If the unit had a fixed orifice such as a piston, this is a piston chamber with a piston inside, or a capillary tube, we would check the refrigerant charge in superheat. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select refrigerant type right here, and we're going to go over to R438A, which is also MO99. As well, we wanna check our metering device right here. We have a TXV. If we click that, we don't want that. That's a fixed orifice. So let's go back to TXV or EXV. And we're also gonna look at our target subcoiling up on the reading plate. This one actually says eight degrees of target subcoiling. So we're gonna change this as well. We're gonna put it at eight. If you needed to adjust this down here, you can adjust this and you can adjust this. So this is at eight degrees and then you just click right here to go back. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and turn the unit on and we're gonna wait five to 10 minutes before checking the refrigerant charge because the unit has a thermostatic expansion valve. If the unit had a piston or orifice, we would wait 10 to 15 minutes in order to check the refrigerant charge. Okay. 
So the unit's been running for about 10 minutes now, and you see on our liquid side right here we have 200 uh, PSIG with a liquid saturated temperature of 96.6. And what's nice about an app like this is it figures out uh, the bubble and do saturated temperatures for you for a blend refrigerant. So if it was a single component refrigerant like R22, it would be real simple, uh, and it would just be one boiling point. Uh, whether you're doing superheat or subcooling, but since it's a blend and it's MO99, also known as R438A, then what you have is a bubble saturated uh, point over here and a dew saturated point over here on the suction line for superheat. So we're going to check subcooling because that's what we need to do for a thermostatic expansion valve in order to check the refrigerant charge. So we have 95.2 degrees saturated temperature. And then we have an actual temperature on the liquid line of 88.2 degrees. So our actual subcooling is 7 degrees. Up on the reading plate of the unit, it was calling for 8 degrees, and we have 7 degrees. So we're just a hair low on refrigerant right there, but basically uh, anything close to it, like 5 degrees, would work, and also 11 degrees would work. So it's plus or minus 3 degrees for your subcooling. As well, right here, It'll give you a little note down here. It says actual subcooling is close to the target subcooling, which indicates an adequate ref refrigerant charge for TXV. Confirm you're using the correct manufacturer's data. So the correct manufacturer's data was the target subcooling of eight degrees. So that refrigerant charge technically is good. If we wanted to, we could put maybe one more degree of subcooling into it. Uh, so if we add refrigerant, the subcoin will increase. If the refrigerant is recovered, then the subcoin will decrease. Now let's check to make sure that the TXV is operating correctly. We have a vapor saturated temperature of roughly 36 degrees, so that's above freezing, so that's good. And we have an actual temperature on the vapor line of 47.6. So 47.6 minus 35.8, and we have an actual superheat of roughly 12 degrees. So a TXV's job is to maintain superheat between 10 and 14 degrees, and it may pick up a degree or two on the way out as well, uh, but, uh, but that's within the range of what a TXV should be operating at. As well, we can also check our delta T up here. We have 68.3 and 51, so we have, it looks like, 17.3 degree delta T. So that's very close to 18 degree delta T. We should have right around 18 to 21 degree uh, Delta T for the uh, system since it has a TXV, but this is also a retrofit refrigerant. We're going to lose just a little bit of capacity uh, on a system that has a retrofit in it. Not much, but just a little bit, so that, that will be good. That's pretty close right there. 17.4 degree Delta T. There's a lot of different things that you can do with this app. You can even work on your invoices in here and track your jobs, but we're just going over how to check the refrigerant charge today. If you're looking for any of the tools used in this video, I have them all linked down in the description below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click right here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you're looking for another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.